Hey guys, welcome to the latest Sunday reviews at Red Vault. In this video, we will check this Black Star HD One R, which is a simple practice amplifier. Also, it's not a new amplifier, but nearly a decade ago, I had a Black Star HD Twenty with an HD One by Twelve cabinet, which is loaded with a single Celestion Seventy Eighty. It was a nice amplifier, but it was my last contact with a Black Star amplifier, actually. So I want to give it a go and since it's Lazy Sunday Reviews, I think it's a proper item for this episode for this series. Also in this video, I want to show my amplifier micing up method just because I want it. You won't get a new thing, you won't learn a different approach, but it might be helpful no matter what. Because of this, I have different items on the table. Obviously, we have a Shure SM57 which is directly connected to the to my audio interface, which is an Focusrite AT920. Also, I have a Bear Dynamic DT770 Pro. It's the AT ohm model. Also, I have a Shure SE215 in-ear monitor earphones, and I have an isolation earphones. I'm not sure about the name of it. In this video, I won't use this headphone, but when I'm using this, I need protective headphones because I used this thing for a long time, especially for micing up those big amplifiers, 100 watt amplifiers with 4x12 cabinets. And I really open up the amplifiers when I'm shooting videos. You can feel the resonance, feel the rumble, feel the loudness from the vibration of the cameras. I'm using iPhones, by the way, and because of this, even the floor is shaking and with floor, the phones are shaking too time to time. They are really loud and I need protective headphones when I'm using these. Bear Dynamic is my new headphone and it's a reference monitor, kind of a reference monitor. I know it's not the cream de la cream, it's not the highest point, but it's a decent headphone and I'm trying to adapt my ears to the sound of this because this this earphone, this Shure, this in-ear monitor has too much high-end and mids in the sound because the, the purpose, the main purpose of these headphones are stage. You have to hear yourself in the stage and there are lots of low-end in a huge venue. You know, those big speakers, big PA systems. So the EQ characteristics of these headphones are more suitable to the stage purposes. But unlike the Shure, we can say Bayer Dynamic is a little bit more of a flat response headphones. So in this video, I'm gonna use this and I will connect this headphone to my audio interface. And let's put this thing on. Also for this video I picked this guitar because of the purpose of the amplifier, you know, it's not that cheap but it's not that expensive too. And because of the same reason I won't adjust this amplifier as loud as it can be. Instead of it I'm gonna play the amplifier with a bedroom level so you won't hear it rumbling, roaring or as loud as it can be. And right now you are hearing the amplifier from the SM7B right in front of me. <laughs> the gain hey hey first of all i will try to find the sweet spot of the speaker because i don't have enough information and experience with the item with the gear that wouldn't be an issue if i would mic up a mesa cabinet with v30s because you know everyone know how a v30 should sound with an sm57 and you can get the good sound with an half cap half con positioning it will give you a good sound it's it's, it's no brainer, but since I don't have enough experience with this, I'm gonna move the microphone around the speaker and I will listen as much as I can. So let's start. I will play with the gain. It's the dead center of the amplifier, of the speaker. And most of the time, going slightly off from the center like this would be enough. But I think because of the smaller diameter of the speaker, it's still too fizzy and too, too loose. So I will go to the 
edge of the speaker a little bit more than my regular I think this is good so I'm gonna fix the microphone right now now let's hear it again and now I'm gonna play the amplifier on the both sides of the spectrum if the microphone can handle those sides I think we will get a good sound no matter what the adjustment the setting of the amplifier is And since we have only one knob to adjust the EQ, which is the ISF knob of the Black Star, it's a thing of the Black Star as far as I remember. You know, one side is British, the other side is American, but I'm not sure which is which. But in a regular amplifier with the regular EQ knobs, which are bass, mid, treble, or presence, or resonance, or those kind of stuff, I'm focusing to the bass and the low mids because I think those are the most problematic sides. If you can get a nice sound and you can adjust the adjust the treble and the presence knobs of the amplifier well, most of the time my, the the sound in the microphone will be good too, but you have too but if you have too much low end or low mid in your sound, it would it probably it will be muddier, more muddier than regular. So I'm listening the low end and the low mids most of the time when I'm trying to hear a good sound from the microphone. So now I think we are good to go. Now let's lose the headphones and let's play. check the left side of the ISF let's go to the bridge pickup without the push pull Check the right side of the ISF. Let's start with the neck pickup with the push pull again. Let's lose the push pull on the neck pickup. And let's check the bridge pickup. I think the clean section of the amplifier sounds hollow and harsh. I think this is because of the diameter of the speaker. Now let's try to get a chugging sound from the amplifier itself without an additional booster, overdrive, etc. Because of this, I'm gonna open up the overdrive section and let's increase the gain. And let's decrease. 
increase the volume. I'm on the left side of the ISF. Check the other side of the ISF. to find the sweet spot of the ISF for the high gain characteristics. I think it's enough. My first amplifier was a Marshall MG15 and I purchased this amplifier. Actually my father purchased this amplifier and my first electric guitar and my first Spanish guitar too. I have a good father I think. <laughs> Hails to him if he's watching. Anyway, it's sun lazy Sunday reviews. Anything goes, you know the concept. Anyway, my first amplifier, my practice amplifier, my bedroom amplifier from 2007, the Marshall MG15 sounds better than this thing because I think the valve in this amplifier is meaningless and the speaker of the amplifier isn't that good too. Of course, you might get a good sound with an additional booster or compressor or EQ, but it's not suitable for practice amplifiers since the practice amplifiers should be compact and easy to use and easy to adjust and it should serve to lots of different sounds. I know one size fits all solutions aren't working that good either most of the time but instead of purchasing this just for a single tube in it purchasing a Boss Katana or something similar to it would be more logical since it can provide lots of different stuff with lots of different FX stuff in it too. But next week I'm gonna connect this amplifier to a Mesa 4x12 rectifier cabinet which is loaded with Celestion V30s, UK V30s. Also I'm gonna play this amplifier with a $4,000 US made Jackson and I will push the amplifier with a Maxon OD808 and this time we will try to observe the beauty and the quality of the circuit if there is any. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the content. This is the end of the third episode of the Lazy Sunday Reviews. Please, if you enjoyed, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Also, you can always make a huge contribution by leaving a comment. Till the next video, see ya.